Hi, I'm Matt Simpson, and welcome to Conspectus, a brand new show from the Game of Infinite YouTube channel, in which we take a well-meaning, but ultimately irreverent look at video games. This week, Ubisoft. We study the how-to guide on how to ruin your reputation as a publisher. sat down and watched the entire first day of E3, you'll pretty much know the drill by now. First up comes Microsoft, certain that this time they have actually got it right. Then you do need this, this TV integration and, and you need a connect, but they still love games as well. They honestly do, they still love games, they promise they do, really they do. Then comes EA Baracus, pitying any fool who doesn't believe in releasing basically the same game every year only with less features and microtransactions and enough DLC to ruin your gullible parents' credit rating. But hey, at least we still own Bioware. You guys like their games, right? So, so we're cool? Alright, fine. The day always ends with Sony, lovingly caressing its batch of exclusive studios and indie friends and shiny hardware, all the while systematically implying they're basically not doing what Microsoft are doing. Don't think you can hide your TV shows from a Sony. We know what you're up to. But sandwiched between all the corporate doublespeak and congratulatory high fives lies Ubisoft, the gaming equivalent of that band that aren't so popular so it's still cool to like them. Ubisoft were the ones you thought you could rely on to show some decent games and innovate a few things and develop with you the gamer in mind. But over the recent years, things seem to have changed. No longer do Ubisoft represent that cool alternative with titles like Assassin's Creed and Rayman and Tom Clancy. Instead, everything just seems to be a rehash of old franchises, like Assassin's Creed and Rayman and Tom Clancy. True, most companies take their successful franchises and milk them like a mountain goat. Do mountain goats milk? Anyway, there's something much worse about the way Ubisoft does it. The company seem to have come to a decision that all their biggest games have to have ubiquitous features and homogenised gameplay. Lots of tasks clearly displayed across a large open world map, completionist charts and statistics, climbing towers to open up new areas and gain access to weapons and items on the map. Hey, they even released the same sodding game twice in a year and no one seemed to bat an eyelid. Mostly because they didn't actually have eyelids. Yeah. And then there's Uplay. Don't get me started on Uplay. No, actually, do. I bought Far Cry 3 shortly after launch for PC, and I bloody loved it for ages. But one morning I woke up and sat down and was told that Uplay isn't working, citing overloaded servers? Well, I didn't really realise that Far Cry 3 had online play at all. It doesn't. All I really wanted to do was slaughter more animals! <laughs> Take that, there, there, haha, -ha. Take that, no, come back! Take that, no, come back! That, and that, come back, no! Oh, I got you now, haha, <laughs> no, come back, wait! <laughs> but apparently, with Uplay down, all access to my Ubisoft games went with it? I couldn't play the game I had actually paid money for because of the very people I'd given that money to. And what's worse, if I had illegally downloaded the game, I wouldn't have had to go through Uplay to access it. So, at the time, the only people who could play a game involving pirates were pirates. Uh, for the record, I am aware this is a joke that would have worked better with Black Flag, uh, but I wasn't actually playing Black Flag. Uh, I, I just didn't want you thinking I'd missed a joke somewhere. The final straw in this veritable smorgasbord of mixed metaphors is how Ubisoft handled the popularity of free-to-play. We all know how the free-to-play model works. You download a game for free, you play it for a bit, and just as soon as you're getting into it, your progress is impeded by waiting times, or a need of collectibles, or an outright cash expenditure. So unless you're fancy waiting a week, you hand over your credit card, and then cry yourself to sleep when you think about your statements. Now there isn't anything particularly wrong with this, and companies have made millions off of this freemium madness. But do you have any respect for any of these companies? I mean, King, makers of the unfathomably addictive Candy Crush, tried to trademark the words Candy and Saga in an attempt to stop other companies profiteering off of their brand. Now this is a brand and a game where the premise was entirely based on Bejeweled, a game that had already come out before it. And I mean, who even knew Saga was in the sodding title anyway? Speaking of dick moves, let's never ever forget the Dungeon Keeper fiasco.
But Ubisoft is the one that we can all respect, right? They didn't need to sink down to such naked profiteering and underhand tactics. Oh, what have you done? It's clear that Ubisoft have let down a significant proportion of their supporters, chasing down almighty dollar, and in doing so have made their games feel less innovative, less unique, less special. Yes, okay, we know you have an indie studio now that's producing some pretty interesting stuff, but which AAA studio isn't doing that anymore? And at least most indie games don't have to be accessed through sodding Uplay. Oh, I need to calm down. Um, I promise I won't, I won't get annoyed again. I should go and play something decent. Some GTA, maybe? Or, um, or Evolve? That, that's quite good, isn't it? Um, or Borderlands? Or uh, Bioshock? I quite like that series. Hang on a minute. They've all got something in common. Uh, another gaming juggernaut, but one that we rarely mention and certainly never seem to criticise. Maybe Ubisoft can learn something from Take-Two. Take-Two own two of the biggest gaming properties around, 2K and Rockstar. Most games they publish are well received, and created by passionate and innovative studios allow the freedom to create without interference of the publisher. There's no freemium app spin-offs, no demand for homogeny and repetition, or ridiculous production and release windows. Just a bunch of teams allowed to do what they do best. Okay, the Evolve DLC thing is a big issue, I'll grant you that. But it's all relative. And speaking in these terms, I think Take-Two deserve more recognition. Now you may be wondering why you never seem to hear about Take-Two. Why they don't have a presence on their games or have an E3 press conference. But isn't that exactly the point? I mean, that's just them sitting in the background, letting the developers do the work that they are paid and employed to do. Isn't that the right way to go about it? I mean, the best games that we've ever played weren't made by mass committee or financial analysis. They were made by passionate and intelligent developers with innovative ideas designed for you and me, the gamer. Ubisoft, take note. You've got a reputation to rebuild. <laughs>